watch that just to pump up the viewers, you know. All right. Well, without further ado, welcome into the 2020 Student Union NFL Mock Draft. Uh, on the board first is Jacob the Man Manley making the pick for the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay, so uh, what do we get? We got 45 seconds. So do I need to take all of these? No, we're taking Joe Burrow. It's, this has been written in stone for about three months now, despite the fact that people did think he might not want to go there, but so far both seem unfounded. And barring the Dolphins selling their legs to the Bengals, I don't think th this pick's going to change. Great pick. Phenomenal pick. Uh, up to uh, Jackson Fields is making a pick. So, Jackson, go ahead. Um, for the Washington Redskins, I'm going to take Tua Tagovailoa. Uh, oh, okay. I don't... <laughs> Whoa. Let me do my explanation, please. Um, <laughs> I don't believe in Dwayne Haskins, and I think Tua is too good to pass up. Obviously, I don't have access to his medical records, but I assume they're good. Most people have said they're good, and if they're good, I think they should take him. Phenomenal pick. Um, so I'm picking at three for the Detroit Lions, and a lot of people think the Detroit Lions need a cornerback, but I'm going with Isaiah Simmons. I think you have to take the best player available. Uh, he's a freak athlete that the NFL has never seen a caliber of before. Uh, people would like to say LeBron James of football, a guy that's long range. He can play any position. He's Jadavian Clowney in a 3-4. Uh, he's what Khalil Mack is in the middle. Um, he's pretty much every person you want in a football player. And, uh, yep, if I'm the Lions at three, we're going with Isaiah Are you Simmons. wasting all your 45 <laughs> seconds right now so that we can't argue with the fact that you just called somebody the Khalil Mack up the middle? <laughs> you're, you're or the, the LeBron fan, James right? of football. <laughs> the LeBron James of football. <laughs> On the night athlete, of the like, Jordan documentary. He's an athlete like the NFL has never seen before. Someone also has asked to join our broadcast. Graham, can you tell us where you went to college? Uh, I went to Greenville Tech, uh, Tri-County Tech, and then may have graduated from Clemson University. Okay, just want, to, just want to check. Just want to check. That's important. Yeah, that's an important fact that, um, yeah, I did. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> yep. Go I ahead. mean, well, I, I, know it's, I know it's me at four, so I can just – I'll just go for the New York Giants. So that make, it makes it a little tougher because – I was debating between Isaiah Simmons and Jedrick Wills, uh, but Isaiah Simmons is off the board. Now I have to change the whole debate. You know, do I, do I want Jeff Okuda, uh, a guy who I feel like has the potential to be, like, one of the best corners in football? Um, but, unfortunately, I'm not going to go that direction because I know that the most important thing for the Giants' success is keeping Daniel Jones upright. So I'm going to take Jedrick Wills. Uh, in my opinion, the best offensive tackle in the class, a guy who can play on the right side or the left side, uh, protected to his blind spot for the majority of his college career. And I feel like he'll make the transition. Uh, and not, maybe not the sexiest pick, but a pick that, pick that they need. You know, games are won in the trenches, so I'm getting one of the best uh, to, to shore up uh, that offensive line. That's a great pick up for Daniel Jones arguably needs more protection than anybody. He's a young quarterback who needs it. Um, Harrison's next. Five. Harrison. All right. Well, the Dolphins need a quarterback. And with Tua and Burrow off the board, that leaves uh, Herbert as the best available. But with Chase Young still there, the Dolphins have to take Chase Young at five. Oh, I oh, – I, I, I forgot he was on the board still. So. <laughs> Everyone forgot about oh, Chase man. Young. Me, <laughs> I should have been crossing the list off. I would have taken. Oh my goodness! Didn't even think about that. What a mistake! I I really am Dave Gettleman right now. <laughs> so it sounds like the Dolphins might have to trade up to get a quarterback here. Yeah, maybe. But they got Chase Young at five. Who cares? <laughs> Next up's Patty. Yeah, uh, with the sixth pick in the 2020 NFL Student Union mock draft, the Los Angeles Chargers select Justin Herbert from the University of Oregon. Oh, uh, yeah, he's a quarterback, and the Chargers need a quarterback. That's pretty much the only reasoning behind that. Uh, yeah. There's really no other positional need. I mean, there are because the Chargers aren't very good. 
but uh, their biggest need is at quarterback. They're not going to survive or play really with just Tyrod Taylor. They're going to need something substantial. Dan, uh, with the seventh pick in the student union uh, NFL mock draft, we got Dan picking. So, Dan, without further ado. Well, it was going to be Derek Brown because the Panthers could use uh, D tackle, but with Jeff Okuda sliding all the way down to seven, I mean, I feel like that's an obvious pick for the Panthers. So I'm going Jeff Okuda because, like you said, Okuda has a real chance to be something super special, and I I see it as well. So I'm going Jeff Okuda. I think that's an easy choice. Great choice. And, uh, I mean, this is uh, Jeff Okuda falling on a seven. That's what happens in any, every NFL draft is it players slide. Players you don't think they're going to be there. DK Metcalf slide of 2019, very memorable. Uh, but with the eighth pick. Uh, big Zach. Big Zach. All right. So, I got the Cardinals here. And a thing that I've always felt with the draft is that teams always tend to ignore the idea of strengthening a strength. And it's the best way to make sure that you're efficient as the year goes on. The Cardinals receiving core is really good. Got DeAndre Hopkins, got Larry Fitzgerald, got Christian Kirk. But if you add CD Lamb here, who I'm going to take here at eight, you become a top two or three receiving core in the NFL. So I'm pairing Kyler Murray and CD Lamb here. It's a phenomenal pick. I mean, you have to go with it, right? CD, you just, like you said, overcrowded position. That's just a money play. Uh, with the ninth pick in the uh, 2019 NFL two-year mock draft, we have Jacob Manley up. Did you just say 2019? 2020. <laughs> the quarantine's got all the years completely uh, messed up, man. Okay, so for the Jaguars, they said they want to give Gardner Minshew a chance to succeed. So I wanted to go offense, but the fact that Derek Brown is still on the board here at the end of the – going into the teens, you got to go Derek Brown. Just – to help with – because they're going to use – they're going to lose Yannick Ngakwe. So, this is the best way to help that defensive line. And it always seems like they're drafting defensive linemen. But why stop? Go Derek Brown. He's a top five talent. And uh, with the Texans, yeah. the uh, Cleveland Browns, and Jackson in the 2020 mock draft. Draft um, So uh, – <laughs> I would, you know, they need one. But uh, actually, they do need to protect Baker Mayfield. So I'm going to take Tristan Wirfs from Iowa. I think he's the second best offensive tackle in this class behind Wirfs. I mean, behind uh, Jedrick Wills. And um, that's going to help the Browns out of a very big position of need because they couldn't keep Baker up last year. Partially his own fault because he's not very good. But, you know. Oh, All right. Well, uh, I guess with 11, I got the uh, New York Jets. Uh, Sam Darnold, you want to protect him. Uh, I'm all in on protecting Sam Darnold. But you lose Robbie Anderson in free agency. You pick up Rashad Perryman. Uh, I think it's time you take Jerry, du- Jerry Judy. He's got to come off the board here. He's too good of a receiver to still be there at 11. Gives Sam Darnold the weapons he needs. Uh, Jerry Judy at 11. And then on to 12, Jonathan. So that was my pick right there. I, I, was, I was hoping for, for Jerry Judy. I was hoping you go offensive tackle. Because uh, the Raiders need a true wide receiver one. I don't think Tyrell Williams can be that guy for them. So they're hoping for Jerry Judy. But they're going to settle for Henry Ruggs. And, I mean, I say settle loosely. Like, I think he's obviously very fast. But what people don't realize is that he's a, he's a really good route runner, too, for his speed. I mean, you look at, you look at all the fast guys. You just assume, oh, he, the only two routes he can run are slants and, and fly routes. But I feel like Henry Ruggs has got a little bit more uh, in the tank. And I think – with John Gruden, uh, he'll be able to, to game plan. And that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good trio in, in uh, Darren Waller, Henry Ruggs, and Tyrell Williams in Las Vegas now. Yeah, uh, even though Hunter Renfro probably is a true number one that nobody's talking about. Oh, that's, that's true. That's, I didn't even, didn't even think about that. Yeah, him too. That's a quadruplet. People forget. Um, that's the man. guy that took Isaiah Simmons over Chase Young. <laughs> He forgot about Jay Young. I didn't. I knew that Isaiah Simmons is the best available. <laughs> I understand. I'm just a big football guy. Um, but like with every draft, you have to announce a trade, even though it happened months ago. But the Indianapolis Colts traded to Forrest Buckner, uh, or the San Francisco 49ers traded to Forrest Buckner to the Indianapolis Colts for the 13th overall pick, which now the 49ers are on the clock, which means I believe Harrison is on the clock. 
Yeah. Uh, with that 13th pick, the Colts are probably going wide receiver, and I think San Francisco is going wide receiver as well. Uh, what's that gorgeous quarterback's name? Garoppolo. I remember, he doesn't. He's he can't throw the ball, but he needs someone to throw the ball to. So I think they're going Justin Jefferson at 13. Wow, turn into a really... heavy receiver draft quick. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, and then at 14, Patty. Tampa Bay Buccaneers selection. With the 14th uh, pick in the 2020 NFL Student Union mock draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Mackay Becton, offensive lineman from the University of Louisville. No exclamation, uh, Patty? Give us something, baby. Yeah. Uh, no, so now that they have Tom Brady, uh, quarterback isn't necessarily an issue for him. They were an interesting team last year. Uh I don't remember exactly how they finished. I think it was something like seven and nine. Uh, and uh, of course, Jameis Winston had the 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions, but it was really a polarizing year because their running game was so interesting because it was pretty inconsistent, but their defense was there. And then they played that game against, uh, I think, Carolina, um, uh, which might have been a London game. And just watching that entire game was just pretty uh in, or it just kind of uh, showed us that they really need some offensive line help. And now if you're going to be protecting somebody who can't really move, uh, like Tom Brady, uh, you're definitely going to need some offensive line help. My guy Becton is your guy. Big Dan's next. I am. Picking for the Denver Broncos. All right. So I was going to go a lot better receiver here, but all the top receivers are gone, and I'm not going to reach for uh, wide receivers that are available. But I think I'm going to go C.J. Henderson here, the corner from Florida. Um, Broncos could use another corner after Harris left. And I, I personally believe C.J. Henderson's a top 10 talent. I could see him going to, like, Jacksonville. But with Jeff Okuda going there, I have C.J. Henderson going to the Broncos. I think he is really physical. He's really good in space. And, again, I think he's a top 10 talent. It's just team needs outweigh – him going in the top 10, so. Phenomenal pick. Now we've got Big Zach up once again, picking for the Atlanta Falcons. All right. Well, I got a couple of options here on the defensive line, and the Falcons are trying to win now. I think, they're, I think I'm going to take Javon Kinlaw here. I think, he, I think on Thursday night he's going to go way before this pick, but he's here right now, so I'm taking Javon Kinlaw. Good pick. Uh, went to a tough school where he had all the obstacles to overcome to become a first-round pick, but he's done it. I think a lot of people from that school can't say they did. So without further ado, we've got Jacob Manley picking next for the Dallas Cowboys. In the draft contract for Dak, I know you can't do that. So the uh, I think the thing that's going to happen with the Cowboys is a report came out earlier today that there's an edge rusher they really like. They've done a lot of work on him but it's probably a position where they could trade down and get him uh, come Thursday. But I'm going to take him here, even if it's a bit of a reach, just because I think this will happen. And it's Eater Gross Matos from Penn State. Good, solid defensive end. They don't know if, we don't know what's going to happen with Alvin Smith. We don't know if he's going to be able to stay uh, sober. So they're going to get defensive end help and just hope their defense can be good, get the quarterback. Great pick. And then next we've got the Miami Dolphins with Jackson Fields. Um, so yeah, they're going to need, uh, they, uh, they're going to need offensive line help. I was trying to think who they pick at five, but it was Chase Young. They're going to need offensive line help. And Andrew Thomas from Georgia is great value here. I think he's, you know, probably a top 15 talent. You're getting him around there. Um, and he's going to help out the Dolphins and Ryan Fitzpatrick, I guess. This was also a trade, um, Pittsburgh trade this pick to Miami. Via Mika uh, Fitzpatrick, Mika Fitzpatrick. Uh, early in the season when Miami cleared house. Uh, so that is a trade you have to announce. Also, next up is myself picking for the uh, Los Angeles Raiders. Uh, this pick was also traded for Cleo Mack, which at the time, Cleo Mack's first game, people thought, wow, what a steal for the Bears. Still now is. Have, 
now they have Mitch Trubisky at quarterback. Not so much of a – They had Mitch Trubisky when they traded for him, too. For the Bears. Oh. That was your first mistake. Well, that's even more depressing. So, <laughs> hey, you, you say it like it's my mistake personally. No, 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 no. We're gonna no, you, you should back. take accountability for it. Yeah. It's your cross to bear. All of you. Yeah, I hate to say it, but it's kind of your fault they did that. Um, but, <laughs> kind of I mean, the Raiders, they need a number one receiver. Uh, they got to take the best player on the board, probably the best receiver in the draft. Uh, I would assume they take T. Higgins here. Uh, Mike Mayock is a huge Clemson I'm guy. Done with last, you. Year, <laughs> last year he drafts three Clemson players. This year he takes T. Higgins in the first round. People are going to be like, oh, what is he doing again? He loves Clemson guys. He loves a winning culture. And well, You love Clemson guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just think that if you're Mike Mayock, you gotta take the best guy wow. forward. Um so T Higgins now he's bias. Taking... Bias. No bias there. He's and that's, and that's two receiver. that's two first round receivers, so Henry Ruggs and T. Higgins. Bro. If it if it doesn't work out with Derek Carr, I mean you can blame it on receivers. Is your next pick gonna be AJ Terrell? God, if he's still on the board, he's gonna be a sneaky snack <laughs> to the Steelers. <laughs> An absolute snack. I also forgot the Oakland Raiders picked Jonathan and they picked uh, Henry Ruggs. Now he's got two number one receivers. Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. There's no, receivers no, they, also got, anymore. they also got the best receiver in the draft. Yeah, it, way later than they took their other number one receiver. So if you really think about it, I mean, they got the two skills. I probably could have waited for the second round to get Henry Ruggs, but they went out, they, they you know, they were – uh-oh. We've removed the 40-minute time limit on your group meeting. We, we've been upgraded. We're good. Nice. Well, I would like to say that if T. Higgins was not selected there, I doubt we would have gotten that extra 40 minutes. So you're welcome. <laughs> Mike Mayock, you're welcome. Everyone else, you're welcome. T. Higgins, now an Oakland Raider. And we've got 40 <laughs> minutes extended. So without further ado, Jonathan, you're up next. And uh, go ahead. Try okay, so – <laughs> So let's say let's say hypothetically that they work out things with uh, with Ngakwe and the Jaguars here. Uh, there's an edge rusher here on the board. So the the Jaguars took uh, Derek Brown at nine. Uh, so if they can keep Unique Ngakwe and they take Cleveland Chase on here with the pick, I think that's a really good front four. And Cleveland Chase on in the right situation, whether he goes to the Cowboys or this Jags front four, uh, I think he could be a dark horse for defensive rookie of the year. Is he, he benefits from, from good players around him, uh, and he's got really good speed on the edge. And I think the Jaguars would be pretty happy with a guy like, like Chase on here at 20. Absolute stud. Also, this was a pick involved in the Jalen Ramsey trade, I believe, uh, when Jacksonville decided to ship off Ramsey and his complaining self all the way to Los Angeles. Right. Yeah, so, I, thought about, I thought about A.J. Terrell here to replace uh, Jalen Ramsey, but – you know, I, you know, I mean, he's the best available, but we'll worry about that later. You know, yeah, let yeah exactly. Bit. Let people keep sleeping. He'll remember, like, Draymond Green, everybody picked in front of him. Mm -hmm. uh, Harrison picking for the Eagles at 21. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think the Eagles uh, they needed a wide receiver, but I think they also need secondary help. So I'm going to take Xavier McKinney. I think he's the best available guy in the second area right now. So he's going to... And we lost Harrison. <laughs> there he he's, going, he's going to Philly. That's a Philly pick. No, he's going to Philly. If this happens in the real draft, he's going to we're all Philly. in trouble. Wait, who did, he, who did he pick? I couldn't hear. Exactly. <laughs> all right, we, we, we know the pick, though. It we came through just well enough. That'll be perfect. Uh, now, Patty is picking for Minnesota, which is a pick acquired from the Stephon Diggs trade last month. Uh, wild NFL for agency. Patty, you're on the clock for Minnesota. All right. Uh, with the 22nd pick in the 2020 <laughs> NFL Student Union mock draft, uh, the Vikings select Ezra Cleveland, offensive lineman from Boise State. Uh, and the reasoning behind this uh, – they have, they have two major gaps in their team right now um, besides their starting quarterback position, which nobody really knows what's going on there. Um, one was offensive line, which is filled with Ezra Cleveland stepping in. And the other is their secondary, uh, which is something that they'll also have to address. Um, their secondary is just bad. 
Um, when you get exposed and when you lose both games to Mitch Trubisky and the Chicago Bears, something's wrong with your defense. Uh, and then if you just – if you had a minute to just spare to watch a Vikings game, you were seeing Kirk Cousins getting pressured less than two and a half seconds after the ball was snapped. Um, which just was pretty unacceptable. Kirk Cousins, I don't think, is a very good quarterback, but let me rephrase. I don't think he's a very good quarterback when you have no offensive line. Nobody really can be. Um, and he's, he should at least be serviceable with a healthy line and with somebody to protect him better. So Ezra, Cle- uh, excuse me, Ezra Cleveland is uh, the Vikings guy. Great pick. Next up, we got Dan picking for the New England Patriots at 23. All right. No, they don't have a quarterback. I'm not in love with Jordan Love, so I don't think I'm going to go Jordan Love here. Jake Fromm looks tempting. You got, but, you got seconds. Take your time, man. No one else is taking their time on a pick yet. Oh, okay. Well, shit. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go quarterback. Jordan Love is not very – I'm, I'm not high on Jordan Love. They lost – underst- <laughs> Hi, can I make my pick? All right, so I'm going to go with Kenneth Murray from Oklahoma, linebacker. They lost Van Noy and Collins in free agency. Um, I don't think Bill Belichick is going to go with the quarterback in the first round. And I think he'll probably wait. I think the Patriots are going to suck next year. So I think they're going to wait for either uh, Lawrence or Fields next year. So I'm going to have them replenishing that depleted linebacker core. Patty, are you in a hotel? <laughs> I, I support that linebacker pick, Dan, as a with the Pats banner in the back. It's a good pick. Kenneth Murray is a good fit there. I can't stop laughing at Patty. You look like you're in a hotel. You look like you run a bed and breakfast. <laughs> I live in the guest room. Um, but moving on to pick 24. Moving on to pick 24, this is the New Orleans Saints, uh, home of Bourbon Street, and now Zach is on the clock. All right. So, as the ASU student, I'd love to pick Brandon Ayuk here, but they signed Emmanuel Sanders. I don't think that's as big of an issue anymore, and they really need corner help opposite uh, Marshawn Lattimore, and I'm sorry, Graham. I'm taking A.J. Terrell. He's my third best corner in the draft. I actually really like him. I think he's going to be a great fit here. Yeah, it's crazy he fell this far. You know, I would have never, never saw third, him. Third corner off the board. That is not a slide. <laughs> you, think, you think the LSU tape had anything to do with that, Graham? That slide he got. That's Jamar Chase. Toasted. You can't Jamar Chase or as uh, – who's, who's the announcer? I can't think of his name. Not Kirk Herb Street. Brett Musper. Oh. No, no the uh, Chris, Chris Fowler just yelling – Chase every single time that they threw a ball. It didn't even have to go to Jay. It didn't even have to go to Jamar Chase. That is just what he yelled out of it. And and people forget CJ Henderson also got lit up by LSU too. It just didn't happen on the big stage in college football. They burned happened in the middle of the season. Uh, when, SEC, when, SEC game of the week is bigger than the national championship. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. My apologies. My apologies. You're right. They, when they you're a South Carolina everyone. fan, you have to cheer for a conference. So I get it. I'm not a fan. I'm a reporter. Okay. <laughs> oh, my apologies. I forgot about that. Capital J. Also, you can't stop Joe Burrow. So, C.J. Henderson and A.J. Terrell both got torched by him. But what are you going to do? Uh, what, you're, what we're going to do here is we're going to give Jacob Manley the mic and let the Minnesota Vikings at 25 pick. Well, after trading Stephon Diggs, the Vikings do need a wide receiver, but our crazy run of wide receivers has kind of left anybody here to be reached. You could go Denzel Mims, but – even then, I don't know if that's just good positional value. But the Vikings' entire secondary almost plays for the Bengals now. So I'm going to go corner and give him Christian Fulton, who I think is probably the third best that's corner. That's who I had. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're fine. I'm done. What'd you that's who I had. Uh, that, that was the other pick in case yeah. uh, Ezra Cleveland got picked at 22 by the Vikes. Christian Fulton was my backup for the Vikes. So good pick. Yeah, yeah. good minds think alike. Oh, now Jackson is on the board with – uh, Houston trade to Miami. Houston trading away two first-round picks for Laramie Tunzel, uh, and here's one of them. Well, I'm a Dolphins uh, stand now. Got two of their picks. I'm going to take another player from the best conference in the country and the best running back on the board, DeAndre Swift. Uh, the, Vi- the Dolphins' leading rusher last year was Ryan Fitzpatrick. 
and that can't happen again. <laughs> so <laughs> we're going to go to DeAndre Swift, and then uh, we're going to not give him a second contract and draft another running back in four years, but he'll be good for four years. That's how you do it. Yeah. Pay running backs. That's how you have to do it. You don't, don't pay running backs. Don't pay I don't, them. Not a single one. Don't pay them. Uh, I don't care who they are. I, 27, Seattle. Jadavian Clowney's yet to re-sign. I think A.J. Espinanza is still on the board. Uh, stud, defensive end, big, fast. He's a, he's a corn-fed boy. He went to Iowa. Uh, so, I think I may take the best available player on the board. I think you got to go A.J. Espinanza. 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 I felt like yeah, was, uh, <laughs> you. All, all over the place. Espinosa. Empanada. A.J. Empanada. A.J. Empanada. I like that name a little bit more. But at 28, um, we got the Baltimore Ravens, and we got Jonathan Pittman. <laughs> All right, so looking at this board here, uh, there's I'm surprised Daniel Jones is still here. I'm I'm thinking, I'm thinking going that direction, but uh, I've just had this idea been floating around. I've heard it from a couple from a couple people that have, that have suggested it, and I really like it. Uh, so with with 28 and the Ravens, I'm going to take Jonathan Taylor. I think he is an upgrade uh, over over Mark Ingram. I think he's bigger, faster. He fumbles a little more, but just imagine what uh, what John Harbaugh can do with Mark Ingram, Lamar Jackson, and Jonathan Taylor backfield. I think that's – I mean, it's, that's a crazy combination. It's worth more than a wide receiver, I think, at this point. An unbelievable backfield. People also sleep on Gus Edwards. What was that for, Patty? For them. Um, I don't know who that was. We got 29, the Tennessee Titans. We have a picture of myself and Jackson in Nashville. Um, it was 29th pick. I think Harrison. I think you're, you're up, Chief. Hey, Patty. Yeah, so the Titans need help just about everywhere on defense. So I'm going to take Grant Delpit out of LSU. And that's all the commentary I have for that. So you're still taking him even though that test came out yesterday about what he did? I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yeah, I'm just you're really uh, gettleman gettlemaning this draft. Yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I get them into that sentence. Pick 30, though. That is Patrick, and that is the Green Bay Packers. You trubisky it. Okay. Uh, all right. With the 30th pick in the – I forget what I was saying earlier. Uh, Denzel Mims, wide receiver from Baylor. No one has taken him. I know that he's been discussed, but the uh, Packers need wide receiving help. Uh, they really kind of ran out the B team last year. Uh, even when Devontae Adams was healthy, uh, they didn't really have a great supporting crew. Uh, so if you want to make Aaron Rodgers better, uh, it's going to be by giving him better weapons. And <clears throat> Denzel Mims is exactly that. Uh, their two real spots of need were receiving core or secondary. And at this point, I think it's best that they take uh, Denzel Mims. But Marquez Valdez-Scantling said he was the best receiver of all time. <laughs> Patty, you do this actual the video stick. to – what was that? You, you do the short end of the stick because you had to pick for the Vikings and the Packers. So you have, I know. You have I know. to watch the teams in the division get better while the Bears are just floating around. Well, who said that they're getting better? I think they're actually getting worse at, at, at some point. Oh, so it was sabotage. So Ezra Cleveland is actually not a good – Ezra, Ezra Cleveland is terrible. I've never heard of him. So. <laughs> it is it's not a, it's a name that I made Jones up. Was Boise State doesn't exist. <laughs> So that is a great score. One question before pick 31, San Francisco. Patty, how old does it get hearing the Mitch Trubisky pick over Deshaun and Patrick Mahomes? Are you asking me? Like, is it hard to even watch Sports Center? No, because here's the thing. What what uh -oh. people don't realize Here we go. is that okay, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Bite your tongue. No, everybody projected Mitch Trubisky above. And he, like including he the Bears. On, yeah. He was higher on every draft board. And when the Bears drafted him for that summer and leading into the preseason when he actually did really well in the preseason, uh, everybody was like, Mitch Trubisky, next, like, I shouldn't even say next great quarterback for the Bears because they haven't really had that great quarterback. The Chicago Bears are the only franchise in the NFL to never have a passer throw more than 4,000 yards in a single season. Yep, when he got drafted, I was thinking next Brandon Whedon, but we will go on to pick 31 at the 49. <laughs> I think that's going to continue for a while, Patty. No more 4,000 yard pass. And Dan, you're up, <laughs> my man. All right. 49ers, 
Um, obviously, the most important thing other than a franchise quarterback is protecting the franchise quarterback. If you want to call him a franchise quarterback, um, quarterbacks usually throw the ball. But um, I'm going to go with Cesar Ruiz from Michigan. Value pick. I like and it. And that's some real Thank football you. guy picks. Thank you. <laughs> a football guy's football guy. Yeah, he's going to get a fullback with his next pick. I mean, 3.3 yards and a cloud of dust. <laughs> Bringing it back. Well, for the final pick in the 2020 first round NFL Student Union mock draft of the people of the writers, the Kansas City Chiefs are on the clock and Zach is picking. All right. Uh, the Chiefs are going to run to the, well, their laptops, however they're doing this <laughs> with this pick. But Patrick Queen is still here and this is a steal. Like, Pat- Patrick Queen's the pick here and he's going to be the anchor in their defense for probably a decade. Okay, so we got the Patrick Queen pick at 32. Uh, we're going into day two. Now with a lot of talent still left on the board. Uh, Trayvon Diggs still on the board. I think he's a highest rated prospect still on the board. Don't forget Jordan Love. Jordan Love was Jordan in Love's there. Still so, on the board. So, Jordan Love and so Trayvon Diggs are the two highest rated still on the board. I is, there any, is there any chance that A.J. Epinesa – I know that we drafted him at – with uh, Seattle, I think at twenty-seven. But is there any chance that he drops to the Bears? We don't need one of the Bears pick. What's your pick? No, I'm, I, I don't know what I don't. I, they pick. They have two picks in the second round. I don't know exactly when they are. Probably Will pretty they, high. Is it like he, he could? Because people pick are at forty-three for their first pick. People are saying that he doesn't have like a true position. Like he's not quick enough to be an edge, but he's not big enough to be. A, like a D tackle. Like it depends on who you ask. Some people yeah. put him at different spots. So maybe he falls. I think he's maybe a, he f- I, I think maybe value, he falls he and fall. I, yeah, and it's kind of an interesting spot because somebody somebody else brought this up and it was a horrific rumor. It just like a terrible, terrible idea, but it was the Bears should trade a draft pick to get JJ Watt. And I was like, that will just never happen in a million years. Um <laughs> but the idea Yeah, well that would away happen. From but, fifth round pick. <laughs> Yeah, we got uh, which is top. which is after the two second rounders that the Bears have, all they actually have is another fifth round pick. Um, yeah, we've done a really bad job of keeping draft capital. Um, but that being said, it, it brings up this interesting positional alignment for the Bears where you would have Khalil Mack, then J.J. Watt, or in this case, you could probably throw in A.J. Epinesa and then have Eddie Goldman, Akeem Hicks, and then on the other end, you have Robert Quinn which is just a ridiculous defensive line that gets to the quarterback in three seconds or less every single down. So that – I've said my piece. Thank you. This actually kind just of trade for, Just trade for J.J. Watt. It, it'll be nothing. <laughs> yeah, but then, you know, then you have to but you're pay ignoring, money. But you're ignoring the whole, the whole other aspect, the whole other side of the ball. Like, they, they struggle to, to move on. It doesn't matter how – Oh, ball. yeah. Oh yeah! You know, oh, like absolutely! It, yeah, I one hundred percent. That is something that they need to attack. They don't have an offensive line on the right side. Uh, everybody thinks that they need to replace their right tackle or their right guard. No, they need to replace both. Both of the players right now are terrible. Uh, and Bobby Massey and I think Rashad Coward. The fact uh, that you can get a Coward sixty nine Bears jersey is just <laughs> so disappointing. It's fitting, Fantastic. actually. It, it really is. <laughs> Um, and then they don't have any tight ends. They just cut Trey Burton, which I'm not against, except for the part where there's seven and a half million of dead cap. No, I was going to say they paid him that much money for one play in the Super Bowl that he didn't even. It was just schemed up. That yeah. was a really good. That was a really good contract. The Bears front office is great. He had a really good uh, first year though with the Bears. Caught like six or seven touchdown passes. Had a bunch of catches with some decent yardage, and then never played last year or he played in a couple games. The Bears didn't have a tight end that hit over 100 yards receiving last year. Well, luckily got Jimmy Graham, so. Yeah, well, so well, that at least that'll continue. At least yeah. the 100 move. yards or less thing should continue. It's a good thing this is the worst tight end class in like a decade. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can't wait to get Thaddeus Moss with our fifth round Cole, pick. Cole Komet in the second round. Oh, I would love that. Yeah, in round three. This All right, fellas. The Bengals, though, because um, there's offensive line talent on the board at 33, so that makes me happy because I don't want Joe Burrow to die in his first season. 
Are they keeping AJ Green? Yes, they are. They franchise tagged him. Okay, so long – because I got him in my dynasty league. And I'm really worried because I traded all my picks for three Nobody years. cares about your dynasty league. league. No, you ever played, <laughs> have you ever played a dynasty fantasy football league? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, you'll never go back. There's no other fan. There's no, nothing else. When you get to keep 25 players and just draft rookies, it's like nothing. It's like the greatest thing ever. You're playing, you're playing all year. I mean, I've been making trades like this whole quarantine. All right, fellas. I'd say that was a successful first round draft. All right, let's start round two. Let's go. Round two. All right. <laughs> Do you imagine if we did a seven round Drake? You just have to like, <laughs> round seven. It's a four like, and a half hour. It's yeah. a four and a half hour podcast. The, 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 the only person that watches it all the way through is my mom. Yeah. Dave Gettleman. Dave Gettleman. And, and Frank, Frank, Frank Finelli. The draft. Yeah, Dave, yeah, Dave Gettleman <laughs> tuning in. He's like, oh, this, this looks good. You know, the by the way, guys, uh, I'm, doing a, uh, I'm doing a radio show with one of my buddies. Uh, we're going live for the whole first round of the draft. We might have, we're, we're talking to John Kitna. Because he's the head coach of the football high school football team down down the road here. Got coming in studio with us, so I'll I'll text the link if you guys want to uh, check it out for a bit. But hopefully, yeah, no free ads, but sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hopefully, 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 we'll get, we'll get hopefully. Some, some good. No, John Kitten is a legend. I'm all he was my fantasy guy like ten yeah. years ago. He's yeah, I'm I'm excited because I think we might be able to talk to him a little bit about what went down and because he was a quarterbacks coach in Dallas last year. So we, we, my favorite part about John Kitna. Is <laughs> <laughs> he the one who ran out of the back of the end zone? No, that was Dan Orlovsky. No, yeah, that was Dan Orlovsky. And, and I, won't take any, I won't take any Dan Orlovsky slander because he's the reason the Colts didn't go 0-16 in 2012. So you guys like –